Okay, today I'm going to show updates to this wave script and also changes that I made to enemy one and a new script calc position, which used to be a function in one of the other scripts. So let's start with the wave script. I'm going to show one addition here is the uh, temp direction that's going to allow enemies to come in from the right now and I'm going to show all the additions I made to this update function. First of all I'm using the path uh, correctly it's declared as an integer and before I thought that random.range would take two integers or two floats uh, it turns out it only takes two floats so I was uh, just to be careful, I'm going to uh, use the floor function on it so that it um, casts it into an integer. So what this does is it says the path is in, either going to be a 1 or a 2 or a 3. And I could be um, more uh, um, specific on, <clears throat> on spacing these out. But if the last one is only 90% of the size of the other ones, it doesn't really matter too much at this point. So after I find out what path a wave is going to be on, it's going to decide if they come from the right or from the left. So I have this variable dir temp and I say that if random.range between 0 and 1 is less than 0.5, then my direction is going to be positive 1 or else it's going to be a negative 1. So up here, this is going to create enemies on the left side of the screen. They will move to the right. And then just the opposite for the else case. So the next thing it does is it says, all right, what path am I on? And this will make a little bit more sense when I go to the calc position script. But this sets up all my coefficients for uh, the three functions that I have coded so far. So I have basically an A an x2 and a d, those are all going to get passed over to the enemy. And they're, these are slightly different for each of these three cases. So case 1 is an x squared function, case 2 is a sine wave, and case 3 is a sine wave that um, does a snake path down the screen instead of left and right. This part down here is the same as in the last video where I instantiate an enemy um, and then I have them spaced out along the X direction so that they don't bump into each other. I've added now this dir temp here so that they can start on the right hand side of the screen, off the screen, and move left. And I have an if statement here that says if path is less than 3 then um, start them on the left. Um, uh, sorry, if path is less than 3, then I'm either doing my um, parabola or my sine wave here. And if it is case 3, then I want to instantiate enemies in the y direction above the screen. So they're going to come downwards. So I have this note here to remind myself that I have a different kind of a function than y equals f of x. Okay, so down here in instantiate enemy which is called um, at the moment five times in a row um, and I'll go back up here and mention one more thing too when a wave is created I want to have all of the members of a single wave to have the same coefficient so I talk about this in my blog a little bit when they all have a different coefficient uh, for every single member of the group they come in all wacky from the sides of the screen. It just looks bad. So make sure that if you do this, that they all have the same coefficient. And then it gets updated for the next wave. So for a single enemy that comes through here that gets called on inst enemy, I'm going to um, create this position vector. And for case one and two, I know that I want to control the x, so those both start off with the uh, position.x or pose.x with the um, parameter that I sent in. 
for case three it's different that's going to come down the screen so i have start sending the starting position as y and then afterwards i uh, make sure that i make the z uh, part of the vector zero so that it's in the, the plane um, everything's in the same plane this is all the same where i um, send in all these different coefficients to the clone i've added a line down here where the uh, direction now gets passed and i have set up all of these extra variables i'm not using all of them yet but i will either start to use them or i will eventually get rid of them depending on the uh, different functions that i decide to add all right so now we'll go over to the enemy one script and what i have added here is a simple um, addition in the switch this is only in the update function i haven't added anything else to the on trigger enter and there are no other functions in here um, so what i do is every update the x position is going to get updated for cases one and two and now you'll see that it multiplies it by this direction here so if it's positive it's going to move to the right and if it's negative it's going to move to the left so I use the plus equals here in the, the DIR variable to handle all that. And then in just a minute, I'm going to show where the calc position um, um, script calculates all these positions. So I have um, my three different cases here. And I send in these parameters. And they're slightly different per, um, per case here. So why don't I just go over to calc position and show those now. So I have made a little comment to myself above each function. And so I can keep track of the order of variables. And um, I am sending in my position first. So x, x, and y. And then I send in my coefficients. So I have a, x2, and d. A, B, D, and A, B, and D. So I see a little inconsistency here. I changed something and didn't do it everywhere. So now that's going to be consistent. Okay, so now I'm going to head over to Unity and I'm going to play. And we can watch all these enemies come in. So here they go from the right. There's the sine wave. Here's another sine wave. Oh, nope, that's a parabola. And the vertical one. So remember, these get randomized between 1, 2, and 3. With equal weight between them, just about. So there's one with a really really low um, coefficient and remember with with these coefficients you can make them come in as steep as you want or as shallow as you want and with the sine wave it can be as um, as slow and lazy as you want or really rapidly oscillating so you just saw um, a few waves ago that one of the um, the waves only came in with a few instead of five members. And that's because off screen they collided. So that's something that I need to take care of really soon is how to make these guys not destroy each other when they bump into each other. Okay, there we go.